Hello and welcome once again to Disappointment. Uh, this is the PHNX D Backs podcast right here on PHNX. My name is Derek Montia, occasionally known as your mayor of PHNX. Once again, even though Shane still hasn't given me my sash back, and I think he's going to hold up in his office and board the doors and the windows uh, until, you know, eventually I have to go in there and with, with some sort of crew and and demand that he gives it back to me uh also joining me though is a man that does not have to fight for his title because he deserves it and earns it uh it is the one and only vice mayor jesse friedman aka our thunderstick uh jesse not the zach gallon outing we were hoping for at home at chase field especially when we really needed to see a better zach gallon outing after his last start uh, against the dodgers yeah, it was not pretty. Uh, it wasn't a good week for the Diamondbacks, and it was not a good week for Zach Gallen, right? Uh, I believe between these two starts, 11 and two-thirds innings altogether between uh, Los Angeles and his start here against the Orioles. He allowed 17 hits total in those two starts, as well as 11 runs. It is just kind of a puzzling week for Zach Gallen, where he just has not really looked like himself. Uh, I know we've talked about how there have been games for him this season and, and some of late where He's given up a lot of hard contact and and gotten away with it. Um, He didn't get away with anything uh, this week. Uh, I think there was even maybe some some bad luck mixed in there. There were some hits that, you know, some ground balls that got through early in this game. Uh, Some Diamondbacks defense that didn't help him along the way. But yeah, it was a a terrible week all the way around for Zach Gallen and possibly an even worse week for the Arizona Diamondbacks, who uh, who lost five out of six games to uh, to these Dodgers and, and Orioles teams. I will say this about Zach Gallon's outing. At the very least, he got things back on track after a while, and I think that's the reason why when yeah. Torrey went to go pull him, he was, even at 99 pitches, he was still, like, not with it. He did not want to come out of the game. And what's funny is we've we've had conversations with Zach Gallon about being economical with his pitch count or or not, you know, not going too far uh, in some instances as far as, you know, how – you know, how, how high he'll drive his pitch count up for certain, you know, games or, or certain outings. But this one felt like he wanted to remain in the game and, and clean up, you know, the, 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 the batter getting on base. And he wanted to get out of that, that inning. He ends up going just five and a third, giving up eight hits, five runs, five earned one walk, four strikeouts. But then, you know, Kyle Nelson comes into the game and to be fair to Zach, the Baltimore Orioles were not fooled by anything Kyle Nelson was throwing. And so like comparatively, you, you realize that maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't Zach Gallen who was being bad as much as it was just a Baltimore Orioles team that has been good all season long that was dialed in against him. And yeah, he gave up four earned there early and he wanted a chance to try to get out of that, you know, sixth inning without letting that run score. But uh, the bullpen definitely not effective against this team as we saw they definitely let things go. I mean, even even if Zach Gallon had a decent outing, I feel like the bullpen. This would have been one of those. There, there goes the bullpen blowing the game uh, because they could not keep the Diamondbacks in this game once once they came into it. But uh, like you said, it's not just Zach Gallon. It's not just the bullpen. Uh, the defense was also not great behind yeah. uh, the mound at all, and a lot of that had to do with Pavin Smith over at first base. I, I I know people want to rage uh, right now about Pavin Smith, and I know people are not happy that Pavin Smith is back and that this is the guy that they decided to the you know add to the lineup. I brought this up just the other day, and we kind of scoffed at the idea that we would even see Pavin Smith at first base. But then Christian Walker uh, was unfortunately hit by baseball very very hard. He still comes back today and hits a dinger and basically hits another ball that absolutely should have been a home run in any (laughs) ballpark in America. But let's first talk about Pavin Smith and his defense because things weren't great for him over there at first. They were not. Yeah. I I can point to two plays in particular that, that could have swung this game in, in an enormous way. If you go back to the very first inning of this game, uh, there was a single off the bat of Anthony Santander uh, that, you know, not an easy play. I don't think it's, it's, you know, easy necessarily for Christian Walker, but a play that you feel like Christian Walker probably is able to make uh, that goes for a single and instead of being an out. And if you play out the rest of that inning, I mean, that Santander single allowed 
uh, the base runner in front of him to go first to third, which then allowed Santander to take second, which then allowed the next single in the inning to score two runs, whereas it would have scored zero runs. Um, so that, that right there, that play turns potentially a scoreless inning into a two run inning. And then later in the game, there was an Adley Rutschman two run double, uh, that happened in the sixth inning. Also not necessarily an easy play for Christian Walker if he was in there, but a play that I think Walker probably is able to make a play that we've seen Walker make before Paven was diving, going to his right, just wasn't quite able to, to lay out far enough. And that turns into a two run double for Adley Rutschman. If you play out that inning with that, with that double being turned into an out, there are two fewer runs on the board. So those two plays alone by Paven Smith at first base, if Christian Walker's in there, if he's able to make those plays, that's a four run difference in this game. And the Diamondbacks lost this game by three runs. So you could theoretically make a case uh, that those defensive miscues in, in and of themselves cost the Diamondbacks this game. I think that's maybe a little overly simplistic. You know, there's there's a lot more a lot more to this. There were some other defensive plays in this game that that were not great. Uh, Cattell Marte had an opportunity, I think, to get an out on, at the plate um, in that sixth inning as well, and he clanks that ball and it goes into center field for a hit yeah. instead. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the Diamondbacks' defense was was really just not good at all in this baseball game. And on top of Zach Gallen not being his best, on top of the D-backs offense, you know, hitting a few homers, but not necessarily getting a whole lot of traffic going on the bases, there's there are some reasons why the Diamondbacks really could have or even should have won this baseball game. Uh, all the home runs that the Diamondbacks had were great, but fairly unproductive in the grand scheme of things with no men on base. They were all solo home runs. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. does uh, hit a career high. 22 home runs now for the Diamondbacks. Uh, that trade, even though Varsho leads the league in defensive run saved, continues to look like a very, very solid trade. I guess you could say for both teams. It's it's just worked out for both teams. Uh, Corbin Carroll hits his 25th home run of the year. and uh, Or no, was it 25th? Was it? It was 25th, right? Uh, Carroll's was 24. 24. I'm sorry. 24. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself just because uh, that 20, 25, 50 season is looking more possible or even maybe a 30, 50 season. Uh, not a lot of time left there for Corbin, but I mean, this, this guy just continues to be outstanding for this team, despite the fact of he struggled, you know, when, when the diamondbacks essentially were struggling, he's absolutely back as of late. He really is. Yeah, he really is. And and that was something the Diamondbacks desperately needed, right? It was kind of uh, Christian Walker doing a lot of the heavy lifting in the lineup with with Corbin struggling and Cattell struggling for, for a while. Cattell still, I don't think, is has quite gotten back to, to himself. Uh, Lourdes yeah. uh, continues to hit some home runs, uh, as you said, but he's not really getting on base at the clip that we saw earlier in the season. So, uh, yeah, you know, at least with Corbin doing his thing again and Christian Walker continuing to be outstanding. I, you know, I mean, it's funny. This is sort of supposed to be the off day for Christian Walker. And yet he winds up coming in. He winds up playing some first base in the latter part of this game. He winds up hitting a home run. And as you said earlier, also hitting a ball 442 feet that would have been a home, <laughs> would have been a home run, according to StatCast in literally any other ballpark. Uh, Every ballpark. Chase, Chase Field to straightaway center is is rough. It is very, very difficult to get the ball out of this park. It, it's hard to feel that like luck is on your side, like that the baseball gods are on your side when that kind of thing is happening. And, and I'm not saying against the Diamondbacks all season long. I'm just saying, you know, in this series as of late, when things are going wrong for them, things are going wrong for them spectacularly. You know, and it's like it's it's in every way. And like this this ball, for instance, this one ball, it's just a fly out. It didn't impact the game in, in that big of a way. But I mean, it's just the fact that we, we could be talking about Christian Walker having literally a heroic day after getting plunked, coming back, taking a few innings off and then hitting two dingers in this game. It would be a very Christian Walker uh, thing to do. But uh, he did stay in the game to play first base, and then he did hit that homer in the ninth inning. Uh, again, seems to be fine after getting hit uh, in the the funny bone area there in the elbow, but not not a great place to get hit. And you know, a, as a Diamondback fan, it's a scary thing to see him get hit like he got hit. That was not great because we've seen that happen far too often to our guys, where that ends up being some sort of broken bone or something that causes them to miss time. That could have been absolutely disastrous for the Diamondbacks yeah. at this point, considering how much they need 
Christian Walker. Today, Paven Smith being out there just again like reiterated how good Christian Walker is. It, it's yeah. It, it, you you made some great points. You 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 danced around it safely because there's no way for us to say Christian Walker was going to make any of those plays that we accuse Paven Smith of missing, but he makes them so routinely and he makes them so often. And at times he doesn't even get a round of applause for some of the things he does. He just <laughs> he just just Christian Walker making a play. Yeah, we see that all the time. You know what I mean? So like there's yeah. just something to be said that when he is not out there, uh, you really notice how good he is and how much he has missed um but yeah and in in fairness to Paven Smith it it is important to point out that like yeah you put like a league average first baseman in those situations he doesn't necessarily make that play I I don't want to make it sound like Paven Smith was just you know clanking super easy plays that major leaguers always make it's just they weren't errors they weren't yeah they they weren't errors and and Christian Walker is is one of the best and and like you just said I mean we're used to seeing that on an everyday basis and at the same time it it does feel like every time Paven Smith does start at first base there are a few of these plays that you know at times have have been the difference in in games and uh, unfortunately for the Diamondbacks that very well might have been the case today uh Kyle Nelson again I I like uh, this bullpen is so infuriating to me and I try to stay I I try to lower my expectations I try to stay fairly calm and and reasonable and almost expect this kind of thing to happen but I can only imagine how frustrating it is for Tori Lavolo where you have a guy that just see you're like yeah he seems to be putting it back together Uh, And then the minute that you count on them in a high leverage situation in uh, in another game, they can't even, they they don't seem to be able to even be competitive with their pitches. And Kyle Nelson, again, it's, it's not like he was erratic or anything like that, but he just, he wasn't fooling the Baltimore hitters at all with anything. Yeah. He's, he's just really struggled with, uh, with runners on base uh, and, you know, inherited runner situations. Kyle Nelson has not been good this year and he's also struggled in higher leverage situations and obviously this was the sixth inning. So it wasn't, you know, this wasn't the eighth, this wasn't the ninth, but it was also kind of a big moment in the game. It was, you know, yeah. he entered with the runner on third and one out Zach gallon, leaving the game. Uh, the game, game was still tied at that point. So it was right. kind of pivotal. The D backs had just tied the game, trying to hold it there. Uh, so it was kind of a big moment, even though it was the six. And again, Kyle Nelson just kind of struggled to, uh, to do anything. He just gave up three straight hits and and left the game uh, immediately after that. So it's just a, this problem that the Diamondbacks have, unfortunately, where they just don't really have any left-handed relievers that that they really can count on, frankly. I mean, Joe Mantiply has just not been the same pitcher he was last year. Andrew Chafin obviously was not good. The Diamondbacks moved on from him at the trade deadline. He has continued to struggle uh, since being dealt over to the Milwaukee Brewers. And frankly, Kyle Nelson is a, is pretty much the best guy the Diamondbacks have from the left side in their bullpen. And yet he's just not, you know, for, for a playoff contending team, he's not an ideal first option to have, you know, when you've got some, some tough lefties. He also has reverse splits, which continues to be sort of a puzzling thing for him this year, where he's been more effective against righties than lefties. So it's tough, you know, when you don't have a single reliever in your bullpen that you feel really confident in against lefties, you know, for some of these big, these big situations and games, D-backs just don't really have an answer for that right now. Uh, Well, it's not just the bullpen, Jesse. And that's the thing that's really not at all. Just lately. It's not just the bullpen. (laughs) Uh, In fact, Zach Davies is once again, our ace. Uh, (laughs) uh, I mean, if if, if you want to go based on the last time through the rotation, uh, Zach Davies, the ace of the pitching staff. So I, I will I will give credit where credit's due. Credit is due. Zach Davies has been very good for this team uh, in his last two outings. And I yeah. mean, as, as much as we have worried about him being part of the starting rotation, as much as we've uh, seen him struggle in Reno before coming back up here, you have to admit what he's been doing lately is is a very pleasant surprise for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And he's he's the only one, right? I mean, think about what's happened to the to the Diamondbacks rotation this week. It was Gallon on Monday in Los Angeles, five and a third, six runs. Merrill Kelly in Game Two, five innings, seven runs. Brandon Fought in Game Three, four innings, six runs, five earned. Then Zach Davies with his six inning one run gem on Friday, and then you know the last couple of days, Slate Sacconi 
and Zach Gallen have had a couple more clunkers. So it's really hard to win a baseball game when your starting pitcher gives up five or more runs. And that has happened every single day this week, with the exception of the day that Zach Davies was on the mound. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, this really does all start with starting pitching uh, this week and, and the struggles that the Diamondbacks have had. I know the offense is, has stagnated. I know, uh, especially once you know, opposing teams have put up these big crooked numbers, it seems like the Diamondbacks at bats just get uh, a little stale. They get a little bit stagnant. There's not quite as much patience. But there have been a lot of those crooked numbers this week. Right. I mean, in both, I think both games yeah. one and two of that Dodgers series, the Dodgers were instantly up three nothing in the first couple innings. Jason yeah. Hayward came within a few feet against Brandon Fott on Wednesday of, of putting them in the exact same situation with a three nothing deficit in, in the first inning. And and then today, you know, you had the Orioles coming out and, and making it two nothing and, you know, then then getting four runs up on the board. And then after the D-backs tie it, they put up four more runs. These big innings, uh, you know, have have really hurt the D-backs offense in some ways. Uh, Tori Lovello talked about it after the game yesterday. There's just like this natural letdown. Uh, you know, it's just sort of a, it's a hard thing to bounce back from when you claw your way back into a game like they did today. And then suddenly you're, you know, you're back from four to four to, to a four run deficit and, and you've got to find a way to claw back. And the Diamondbacks have not been able to do that. Tommy Pham was supposed to be in the lineup today, but he was a late scratch, uh, but we don't know why. Has there been any updates in regards to that? I I personally have not heard any updates on that. Uh, I know on the broadcast they were speculating that I think it, I think Tommy Pham hit a foul ball off his knee uh, yesterday. I, I want to say it was so maybe mm. this is related to that. But uh, I'm sure we'll get some sort of information pretty pretty quick here. Maybe they've even announced it here in in the few minutes after the game. I haven't seen it yet. Well, you got Tommy Pham taking that. You had uh, the Christian Walker off of his elbow. Then today in today's game, you had Zach Gallen getting grazed off of a comebacker that bounced off the mound. They had a lot of bad, just bad balls bounce not their direction today. And I know, yeah, again, that's just such a cop out, but it it really did seem like there was just a lot of weird plays where balls were, you know, taking a misdirection and, and they were missing them on defensive plays. And again, there was also the fact that, uh, Pavin Smith just being out there playing defensive first, just, uh, just isn't Christian Walker and it, he's not any, he, and few people are, but he's definitely not. And, uh, I, yeah. I miss, I miss seeing Christian Walker out there again. I'm sure. So did the diamondbacks, but I'm glad he's okay. Uh, I don't know if the diamondbacks are okay. We'll have to see. They have an upcoming series against Colorado Rockies that is pretty much a last-ditch effort to get right if this team can't get their offense back on track uh, in Colorado against the Rockies. I, I, I have nothing. I have nothing for you. Well, it's not in Colorado. It's here. Oh, it's not. That's right. I forgot. It is here. But still? But still? Even yeah, if it I is know. here? Yeah. I don't care how hot it is. Open up the goddamn panels and the roof. Let's do this. Uh, King Snake. <laughs> for this series is once again Corbin Carroll because Corbin Carroll continues uh, to be good for this team. Five for 13 in the series. He had to that home run today, double uh, RBI. Not, I mean, there wasn't a lot to praise offensively for a lot of guys. I feel like in this series, but Corbin at least was getting on base consistently. And, and uh, he's, he's, he's back to doing that stuff. He's back. He's back to being able to be a factor in, for this team. It's just there wasn't a, a lot of guys able to to drive him in. Yeah, and as uh, as piece of Yoshi pointed out in the chat, Corbin did get uh, his dome buzzed there toward toward yeah. the end of this game. I don't like that either. Uh, I don't like fortunately, that. he was uh, he was okay. He didn't get hit by the pitch, but uh, yeah, like I, I am ready before, to fight. I will fight for Corbin Carroll, Jesse. I will absolutely. Um, I will fight anyone. I will I, I will storm the field from the press box. I'll get my credential revoked. That's what, I mean, again, that's what he wanted from us, right? I remember the Mookie Betts interview. There was something about, like, everybody needs to fight or something. I don't know. I just, I, I just want to How exactly know. does one storm the field from the press box? It would take me a long time to get down there. I'm pretty sure okay. things would be you're over. Not, you're not just, I, like, leaping, like, over, making, like, a dramatic landing, maybe pulling out a parachute. That's difficult. Um, I don't, I, I feel like any solution I have other than like a rope ladder that I preemptively brought, like, and I don't, I don't know how the, how the security guards at the yeah, front they, gate are going to feel if I'm bringing a, 
a rope <laughs> ladder in my backpack. Plus, where am I going to fit my charger and my AirPods? That seems like it's not uh, it's not going to work out. But anyway, uh, we thank you guys, though, for being here in the PHN Exports YouTube channel. We thank you for loving this Arizona Diamondbacks team, even though at times they don't deserve to be loved. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so now. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss whenever we go live. And leave us uh, leave us a little thumbs up just to let us know you're here and that you like uh, like like our antics. If you're listening on the audio podcasting side, please subscribe to us there as well. Leave us a review. Uh, we always appreciate that feedback as well. Uh, and if you need to fill yourself up, you need to cool yourself off uh, after this loss, you need something to drink, you got to stop at America's Thirst Stop. And of course, that is Circle K. Uh, Circle K has their brand new Inner Circle uh, membership program, which you should check out immediately. It's going to save you 25 cents per gallon on your first five Phillips. You're going to get uh, the sixth free on selection of Circle K products, including pizza, coffee, uh, ice cold fountain drinks, those polar pops that I'm always telling you at the gas station to stop and buy. Make sure to check that out. Uh, you can join the Inner Circle membership program for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit circlek.com for details. And uh, get, again, join the Inner Circle. Be part of the Inner Circle. Uh, and also, be part of Splash Sports, which is where we will be with our weekly Pick X and NFL Survivor Contest for everyone to participate in for real money. It's this easy to enter. You just head to SplashSports.com slash PHNX and sign up. Deposit cash to get started. It's just $5 to enter either of those contests. And then for the PHNX Weekly NFL Pick X Contest, first prize is $315 with second prize and third prize. Uh, you also have a PHNX Survivor Contest that's a $450 winner-take-all prize. So we will be playing, uh, running weekly contests like this all year. So be sure to keep that link handy. And if you want to run your own contest, you can do that over there at Splash Sports. Uh, forget being the commission of your own league and chasing people down for the money. And it's thankless. They just yell at you. They call you like they're like, God, stop bothering me. You're trying to run a league, You're trying to run a, run a legitimate league. We can't we can't start the season without your money, Paul. You know, that kind of thing. So forget all that. Go and do your own thing at Splash Sports. Uh, and earn money for contests you're already running with friends and family. Head to splashboards.com slash PHNX to join in. We'll have different contests coming out, so we are stoked to compete with and against you all. Be sure to click our link in the description. Jesse, even though I don't want to, let's take a look at the numbers for this series with the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, things, once again, uh, very, very much... Uh, a very uh, Explanation. Here's the explanation. You want to know why they lost the series? Here it is. Yeah, I mean they they didn't really hit with runners in scoring position. They hit six homers over this over the course of the weekend compared to just two for the Orioles. But four of those six homers were solo shots, and the other two were two run shots. So you know those six home runs only turned into eight runs for the Diamondbacks. It felt like the Orioles had traffic around the bases really throughout this series. Obviously, Friday was a little bit of a lighter day for them offensively, but the last couple of days. Uh, they've really been all over the place. They had 33 hits over the course of this three-game series. And yeah, as you see there, the D-backs a 7.36 ERA for their starting pitchers. It's going to be hard to come away with with a you know a, a series win against a very good team when your starting pitchers are are struggling to that degree. Who would have thought that Zach Davies would be the star here at, with his six innings? Uh, one earned run. He definitely didn't contribute to this ERA being so high, but uh, yeah. the relief, you know, the bullpen had a lot of work there to do. They pit went five and two thirds in the second game of this series. So just uh, not great for a bullpen that's already been taxed and already is fairly unreliable, right? Like you, you, you don't really know who you can count on at times. And then on top of that, it feels like, uh, they're getting a lot of work lately. It uh, doesn't, doesn't feel like they're the kind of staff that, you know, can do too many of these opener bullpen type games, right? So, like, it's, it's really starting to stack up. But offensively, too, you know, the runners in scoring position, they were three for 17. Uh, yeah. And honestly, the, the Orioles almost doubled them up on, on scoring opportunities. So not only were they better at taking advantage of the runners in scoring position, but they provided themselves with – Double the opportunities nearly. The Diamondbacks, 17 runners in scoring position in the series. The Baltimore Orioles had 31. 
So that's yeah, that's or like really opportunities, it. 17 opportunities with runners in scoring position. Yeah, correct, 31 correct. Opportunities. Yeah, yeah, correct, yeah, correct. So yeah, the Orioles uh, had had 10 hits with runners in scoring position in the series compared to three for the Diamondbacks. So yeah, they just had way more traffic on the bases. And you know, even if you're not really hitting homers, which the Orioles didn't do much of this weekend, you can still score a heck of a lot of runs by just keeping the train moving around the bases. Yeah. And and they did it sort of in bulk, uh, right? I mean, yesterday with with Slade Ciccone and the way that his out unraveled, he was really good for three innings. And then in the fourth, he just gave up seven consecutive hits. And that was that. The Orioles put six runs on the board and the D-backs weren't really able to, to bounce back from that. So really just a few huge innings for the Orioles in the series. There was that six-run inning for them yesterday. Uh, there was the four-run inning today that kind of sealed the deal those big innings just ultimately buried the Diamondbacks this weekend. So we talked about this part of the schedule and we said that this was the part that we feared, right? Uh, and it doesn't, be, get, I mean, it, it literally does not get much more difficult than a Dodgers Orioles week. Like that yeah. is about as hard of a week as you can draw up in this sport. And it, it lived up to that. I mean, the Diamondbacks looked pretty overmatched in this series. They got outscored. 23 to five in the Dodgers series. They got us scored 17 to 12 in this one. So uh, that's what 40 to 17 altogether and this week. Just got outscored. That's and, not and, great. <laughs> in the words of the iron Sheik, they humbled our ass. They humbled our ass and they humbled us. Uh, and that's the thing is that that's, that's where I think a lot of Diamondbacks fans need to keep their expectations reasonable. It's not to say, that this team isn't building towards something great. It's just to say they're not there yet. It's not to say that you can't get excited about wanting them to have a winning season and to be above 500. It's not to say that you don't want to shoot for the moon and see this team make the playoffs and maybe even make a splash in that wild card round and maybe advance. But just like, you know, when we advanced last time, it uh, it's, it's going to come crashing down on this team very quickly. I think once they start playing, the elite talent in the national league. Yeah. And that's what we faced here. It was the elite talent in the national league and the American league wanted to see how they would fare. You hoped they would fare better, but coming out of it with one win in, in six games is about as expected considering the way that this team has played against the best teams in baseball. Right. So yeah. now what we have is a schedule going forward. That is considerably easier with those teams out of the way. Uh, but it doesn't mean that things get any easier because now things just get more important. You have games against the Cubs coming up that are absolutely must win games. You have games now against the Colorado Rockies, which is this upcoming series they have. That is a must win series, if not a must sweep series. And now that's the mode you're in because you don't have a lot of time after you deal with the Cubs, you have the Mets, then you have the Cubs again, then you have the Giants. So it's like you're you're the Diamondbacks' fate is in their own hands. They control their own destiny. But they the, the, like getting these losses against teams that are much better than you. There, that's in the past and it's done. At this point, they have to focus on what's ahead and and beating those teams that are in this wild card race with them. Yeah, and and one more thing on the Orioles. I think like in the first couple months of of this season. There was this perception that the Diamondbacks and the Orioles were kind of on the same uh, in a similar place, right? Uh, coming out of, you know, they they basically shared the worst record yeah. in baseball two years ago. Last year, they both took a big step forward. The Orioles a little bit more so than the Diamondbacks. And then this year was kind of like the big coming out party for those two teams where they were going to come out and, and sort of show the league what they could do. The Orioles are significantly further ahead in that process than the Diamondbacks. And obviously the records bear that out. The Orioles are, you know, I think north of 30 games over 500 at this point. Uh, you saw it in the series. I think the Orioles are just the, the better overall baseball team. The, the D-backs and, and Orioles are maybe somewhat similar from, from a starting pitching standpoint. The Orioles don't have a Zach Gallon type. Uh, their starting rotation is is maybe even slightly worse, but their bullpen is way better than this Diamondbacks yeah. bullpen. Yeah. And their position player core is just deeper. The, the D-backs have Corbin Carroll. He's the big, you know, the stud, the superstar coming up through their system. The Orioles have more guys, though. The Orioles have not only Gunnar Henderson 
right? They have Ryan O'Hearn, who's come out of nowhere and, and turned Adley into an Rushman. outstanding play, yeah. player for them. They have Ryan Mountcastle, who's been an outstanding player for them. Adley Rutschman, of course. I mean, he's probably the, the best overall player on their team. The Royals just have a deeper young core than the Diamondbacks do. And I, I just... I just can't really compare these two teams much. The Orioles are just in a completely different place as a franchise. I don't know, though. I think this makes me think of what Christian Walker said, where he said you you can't get stuck comparing yourselves to other teams or like he was talking about the the progress, you know, that the, the, the way they're hitting now versus the way they were hitting in the first of the season, right? Like the Diamondbacks are are in a great position position for the trajectory that the team was on like the Orioles have just blossomed early and they deserve all the credit in the world for being as good as they are this season I I think the Orioles are ahead of schedule and like you said they've always yeah, kind they of are. been absolutely they, both teams they, are ahead of schedule right and so like for the Diamondbacks though I think it's still just a matter of um you know again like you said maybe not having as many of those guys but it's not to say they don't have them in, in their farm system it's not to say jordan lawler won't be here next sure. year and then when jordan lawler is here next year or that, or this year team, or this year, or this right? year <laughs> i know this cross with the way the things the chat are seeing. not are not giving up on that and i i still think it's i still think it's possible it know. is but uh luckily the diamondbacks once again aren't the only team that uh, that's playing bad right now that that is in the wild card race it's it's still kind of a, a mess and we have an update on our live out of town scoreboard is this making its debut today jesse look at is that it? thing I, yeah Beautiful. i guess if you guys if you guys didn't use it in la then yeah this is it yeah Oh man, do we have light bulbs for this? Because this might not be the best idea to go <laughs> this old school with. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, the Chicago Cubs beat the snot out of the Cincinnati Reds. So I don't, I, I don't know what to think about going into a series with those guys here in in, in a week or so. But uh, Philly beat the Milwaukee Brewers. We got uh, the Miami Marlins winning over Washington. We have the Dodgers finally winning a game against the Braves. And then the Giants uh, lose to the San Diego Padres four to nothing. So, uh, what are your thoughts here on on this race? And I guess we could take a look also at our wild card standings because that's going to show where things oh are at. Gosh. That, my <laughs> friends, that my friends is a four way tie for the final playoff spot. That's impressive. It's insane. It's insane. It's crazy. You you can't. I mean, come on. These teams wouldn't even be in it without this extra spot. That's the beautiful thing about this extra wild card spot. And you could make a case that they really don't deserve like none, like none of those. No, teams. none of them deserve. Those it. teams no. are all just not no. playing well right now. I know Alex Cobb had a rough outing today for for the Giants after throwing a near no hitter in in his last appearance. I know he threw 131 pitches in that game. Maybe it had something to do with his struggles today. Uh, the Marlins have kind of hung steady, uh, although they were playing the Nationals this weekend and their schedule is the most difficult out of this group moving forward. Um, and the Diamondbacks are just kind of coasting after after a tough week, 70 and 67. And the Cincinnati Reds are somehow hanging around, Derek. Uh, I don't <laughs> really know. Matt McClain, is, it appears, is out for the season. They just got decimated with a bunch of COVID IL uh, injuries over the last Yikes. few days some of their i believe graham ashcraft i think is is injured with i want to say something that wasn't covid and then brandon williamson who's, who's a, been a good starter for them is on the covid il along with a number of other players so the reds roster is is really decimated right now but yeah none i mean these four teams none of them are really playing good baseball right now and uh, I mean, you get the sense that in a postseason series, none of these teams would be able to hold a candle to what, you know, some of the other NL teams, especially the top NL teams are, are doing right now. Um, but at the same time, you know, in the MLB postseason, anything can happen. So this this third wild card spot just kind of opens up the door for one of these teams to be able to make it in. And uh, I mean, even the Chicago Cubs, I mean, they're they're still not necessarily guaranteed a spot with how many games the Diamondbacks have with the Cubs over the next few weeks, uh, the, you know, that, that race is, is not at all over. I think the Phillies at this point, you can say pretty confidently they're going to be a playoff team, but you know, the, the rest of that NL wildcard picture is, is still very much up in the air. Well, I want to take a moment to 
uh, talk to a couple of our PHNX diehards that are here in the chat, like Charles Woodall Pike and Elizabeth. And I don't know if Cogs is here, but Cogs too. You guys made me all teary eyed with your messages that you sent to us uh, at PHNX for our two year anniversary. And I just want to thank you guys again. I can't express enough how much your kind words mean to us. Uh, Jesse also got a bag full of love, essentially a bunch of notes. And uh, I think uh, they gave me a ping pong paddle, which was outstanding. Yeah. (laughs) So you can practice. They gave me the balls. So I, it's like, I feel like we need to get together here and work. They gave me uh, a beer pong kit. It would feel and some gummy worms. And I love them so much, but I uh, can't thank you guys enough for that. Can't thank you guys enough for being part of the Die Hard family. Uh, if you haven't joined us already, we would love for you to also become part of this community over here. Uh, yeah, and Groundhog Mama, you too. Thank you especially for your note. And you're right. Uh, Chris is a very special part of our Die Hard community. And uh, we can never say enough about uh, how much her love and support means to us and and how much her being involved with sneaking around in the shadows and having something like this done uh, means I, I did hate the fact that I came home to my wife, very excited to tell her about it. And she was like, Oh yeah, I know Chris called me. And I was like, damn it, damn it. Uh, everybody knew, but me and us at PHNX. So uh, we thank you guys. You guys are wonderful people. So like I said, if you want to join us over here and become a member of our diehard community, you can get uh, a free shirt from the phnxlocker.com. You get 20% off all future purchases. You get a, a discount card for all sorts of wonderful stuff with all of our partners. You get a Dobson Ranch Ranch card if you like golf. If you like pizza, there's a $50 Mountain Mike's gift certificate. You also get access to our members-only Discord Lounge, which is the best place in Arizona to be a sports fan. You get Jesse's newsletter, Full Count, and all the newsletters from all of our wonderful writers around here and so much more. So join us today. Become part of this diehard community uh and also we got our upcoming takeover event on september 5th we do have tickets available for that still if you guys haven't had a chance uh join check that out over at our events page if you uh don't get a ticket to that but you still want to go see a diamondbacks game or even want to join us on september 5th do so by buying your ticket through game time it's the best place for procrastinators to buy their tickets uh if you get fomo if you just want to you know get those tickets i'll tell you this there uh and i mean going back to jesse's thing about uh teams being decimated by covid they'd also got metallica because i was supposed to go see metallica here after this show wrapped and i am not anymore because their lead singer got covid and so that show has been pushed out really like just like that just happened it just happened because they had a two night show it was on friday night and then tonight and it was supposed to be a completely different set list with different opening acts and all that so if you were a big metallica fan you would go to both nights and get a completely different experience. Uh, well, you did because on night two, you got the experience of the show being canceled and moved to the yeah. following Saturday. <laughs> it's can't really say rough. it wasn't different, Derek. It, it definitely was different. It just didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> it sucks because my friend Brian, who was there, said he met a lot of people from out of town and they were staying here throughout the weekend so they could go to both nights. And now being moved to next weekend is not very easy for people that come come from denver uh and nevada and california to just you know come back next weekend so uh with that being said if you are interested in seeing the metallica show chances are there's going to be a lot of tickets available from people who can't go and one of those places that you can get those tickets is at game time so uh make sure to check out game time for uh fastest it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason and you can snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code phnx for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code phnx for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed uh, and i did want to say something jesse i do have something to confess i lost my shady rays this weekend Really? I lost them. I did. Wow. I did. You just did that on purpose because you know they're going to replace them, didn't you? That's that's <laughs> maybe. I don't know, but you know what? Even if that's the case, they're not going to they're not, no judgment. They're not going to ask me any questions. They're not going to come at me with those accusatory kind of statements like you just made. Uh Shady Rays is a premium sunglass company with a premium product, but they are also backed by the craziest, most insane protection and uh, plan in all of eyewear. Their lost and broken replacement plan uh, 
says that if you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you out a brand new pair. No questions asked. So now I need to get a brand new pair back from them. Uh, they have your back long after purchase. They have my back long after purchase. And of course, they're a world-class company with a world-class product. You can shop their entire location at their uh, local uh, spot here in town, uh, here at Kierland Commons, uh, or you can shop online at their website at shadyrays.com. Again, if you do not love your Shady Rays, even if you get them in person or online, you can either swap them out for a new pair within 30 days, or you can get your money back uh, within 30 days. No questions asked. Uh, you get them back for you get your money back for free. There's no risk when you shop with them exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to shadyrays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. The shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Jesse, I am wearing this shirt for a very particular reason. <laughs> and it's not just because I love the fact that it calls Brandy Johnson a bird murderer uh, down at the bottom. Uh, it is my bird murderer shirt. It says revenge for Fabio. This is a bootleg shirt uh, that is very limited. And you won't find this anywhere, by the way, because I'm sure someone would sue the person that made it. But uh, the reason I'm wearing this shirt today is in honor of the number one spot on our PHNX ranks, Arizona all-time athletes. And that spot that championship spot, that top spot goes to none other than Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson is number one on this list, and he absolutely should be. I know there's a lot of debate there. It's a hot debate. It's a hot topic. Who should be number one? Uh, should it be uh, Larry Fitzgerald or should it be Randy Johnson? And as much as I am a Cardinals fan and as much as I love Larry Fitzgerald, Jesse, this is no debate. This is no, no debate. <laughs> the thing is, is that Randy Johnson did things, especially for this team, much like Christian Walker does so regularly that you just don't, you didn't even think in the, at the time or in the moment, how special it was. And I don't know if like younger fans really can wrap their mind around a man winning four Cy Youngs as an Arizona Diamondback. Is that right? Four Cy Youngs? Am I is my math right on that? Was did he have a hundred and three wins in five years? Did he nearly have more wins than home runs allowed at 132 home runs allowed and 103 wins in that span? This man was an absolute beast, an absolute beast. Nearly two thousand strikeouts in five years, Jesse. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't doesn't compute. I mean, yeah, and, and what's even crazier is that, I mean, those four straight seasons where he won a Cy Young with the Diamondbacks, he was in his mid-late 30s that whole yeah. time. Started yeah. in his age 35 season. Yeah. That stretch ended in his age uh, 38 season. Of course, he also pitched, uh, you know, his age 39 and age 40 seasons with the Diamondbacks. Wasn't quite as good in 2003, but was very, very good once again in 2004. Uh, yeah, I mean, Randy Johnson, at least personally, Randy Johnson is the best left-handed pitcher in the history of baseball in, in my book. I, yes. I feel pretty comfortable saying that. The best pitcher of all time overall, I don't know if I would quite go to, to that level. I think there's some some good debate to be had there. But the best lefty of all time, that's a that's a, a title that I think he absolutely deserves. And it's crazy. Because, I mean, the reason that he had those crazy years with the Diamondbacks so late in his career, uh, I mean, he was pretty good before that, but... He actually hit his stride like right as he turned 30, essentially. That's really yeah. when Randy Johnson was at his most yeah. effective. Before then, he was still a pretty decent pitcher. And I mean, from that point forward, you know, he was he was the best pitcher in, in the sport for a good long time. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that the Diamondbacks were able to the fact that the Diamondbacks were able to have Randy Johnson in the first place, right? I mean, they had been wild. a franchise for a year yeah. and then they yeah. got Randy Johnson, the greatest left-handed pitcher of all time. And I think the biggest determining factor for me that, you know, comparing Randy with some of the other Arizona sports athletes is the man was the co world series MVP without him. Uh, the Diamondback or the, the Arizona sports at large would still be looking for that first big title for, you know, one of the, one of the three major sports. So, um, or I guess four major sports, depending on, I don't know. Does hockey count? Do we count hockey? Oh my God. Um, I can't believe you just said that <laughs> on the same network that Craig Morgan works. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Craig knows there were, people, feel. there were people the other day that were mad. I wasn't giving Mercury the love. And it's like, look, I 
like the Mercury Mercury are the greatest local sports team we have by far yeah. as far as championship right. caliber teams. But I'm not the one that makes the rules here. You know that, right? Like they don't they don't count WNBA as one of the major four teams. And <laughs> my not... point is, even if you do count the Coyotes, the calculation doesn't change. The Coyotes also have no. Have no I know. I get it. I get it. Of, but they wanted so... us. They wanted us to throw the mercury in on this too. And uh, yeah, see, Sean's watching. Sean's gonna tell everybody <laughs> on the Coyotes podcast. You're in so much trouble. You said that for Charles Woodall Pike too. You monster. Uh, but like, like you said, I mean, he led the he led all major league baseball in wins uh with 24 wins in 2002 uh he led i mean he led most years in era he led the national league in era in 1999 he led all of major league baseball in 2001 he led the national league again in 2002 like he was just the most dominant pitcher over that stretch and like you said it's just kind of wild that it was it all happened once he became in Arizona Diamondback. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the wild thing too is is that right the, the, he did this in a ballpark that has widely be considered to be a hitter friendly hitter, ballpark hitter friendly park and in the middle right? of the steroid area. They had to they had so. to have a they had to have humidors and shit, right? And like yeah, right. Like that's crazy that he did all of this during this time. It really is. It's basically like for like for as great as Zach Gallon is, and obviously he's had a rough week, but Zach Gallon is still a fantastic pitcher, one of the best in Diamondbacks history. I mean, imagine Zach Gallon with, I mean, the equivalent of like the mid low two ZRAs that that Randy Johnson was posting in those years. Nowadays, I mean, that would be like Zach Gallon having a two flat ERA, maybe even under two. So imagine Zach Gallon as good as he already is, as fantastic as he already is almost cutting his ERA in half. And also on top of that, having him throw about 60 more innings. Randy Johnson in 1999, 271 and two thirds innings, 248.2 the next year, 249.2, 260 in 2002. Obviously, you know, we can't necessarily blame Zach Gallon for this because, I mean, pitchers are used differently now than, than they were back then for, sure. for good reasons, for valid reasons. So, you know, I, I don't want to be unfair to Zach or anything. Just to, like, understand the, just how, how much of a different level Randy Johnson was on compared to, I mean, there have been some really good pitchers that have pitched for the Diamondbacks over the years, uh, but Randy just, I mean, best left-handed pitcher of all time, I, yeah, like I like said you before. Said. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could talk about the fact that, like you said earlier, that he delivered Arizona, the only major championship we have in our in our state's history. But there's also that perfect game thing to to not forget, right? Yeah, that was, only been, that was okay. Yeah. There's only been 24 of those, by the way, in Major League Baseball history. And like it's hard to keep that into perspective. Uh that there that's only happened. 24 times in a sport that has 162 games per season that has been around since the dawn of mankind essentially like it's crazy that he is one of only 24 pitchers to throw a perfect game in in baseball history so like that right there that and the uh you know i mean it's like everything everything combined like there's lots to say. You, there's so much praise you could heap on other athletes in this state, but what what Randy Johnson did was historic in his time here, literally. Uh, and and you know that's something that I I feel like is kind of understated at times. Like they talk about a lot of good pitchers uh, in, in history, and Randy Johnson does get included with those guys but he gets kind of lumped in there versus kind of at times being talked about literally one of the best pitchers of the modern era. And he, he absolutely should be. And he's number one. He's number one on this list. I would, I, again, talk about me coming down the field and fighting for Corbin Carroll. I will absolutely come all the way down from the press box to fight you on this topic when it comes to who's the number one athlete in Arizona sports history. Yeah, I would have been. Yeah, I, I, at least I was not asked to vote on this. I don't know if you were. I guess I, you know, granted, I, I've only been around for so long. You are, you're in charge of all the voting for awards on this show, Jesse. You know that. That's all. Well, all goes baseball, through you. baseball specific, <laughs> sure. But yeah, there are, I will confess, there are people on our top 25 Arizona sports athletes where I'm like, who? 
Like, oh. I, I don't even know who these people are. Um, but yeah, if if they had decided, if the powers that were had decided that Randy Johnson was not the number one uh, athlete in Arizona sports history, we we would have had some conversations about this. Things would have yeah. gotten a little testy in the yeah. office because I don't yeah. think either either you or I. Uh, even if we don't necessarily know the full breadth of information about everyone else on this list, or at least I don't, I know for sure that Randy Johnson is the best Arizona sports athlete of all time. And I don't even, it, you, you really can't even have that much of a debate about this. I don't think he is that he is that historically good and uh, will be remembered that way for a very long time. Uh, Sean puts up a very good point. Uh, he says Diana Tarazi. And to be honest, I think there's more of a case to be made for Diana Taurasi than there is for Larry Fitzgerald. But yeah, uh, I, would, uh, I think I, I definitely could see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Um, sorry. Sorry. I'm a Cardinals fan too. I'm just saying. Uh, let's take a look at what the Arizona Diamondbacks have uh, coming up here in at Chase Field this week. Uh, they are taking on the Colorado Rockies, who of course have not been very good this year with their 50 and 85 record. They have a minus 200 run differential. And uh, they're not so good in their last 10 games, two and eight. This is kind of exactly what the Diamondbacks need right now. Am I right? It is exactly what the Diamondbacks need. Uh, Yeah. I mean, the Rockies are about as bad of a team as you'll find in the National League right now. Uh, 50 and 85, a minus 200 run differential. Uh, They did win today, I believe, but they have not played well recently as a whole. Uh, yeah, they're a bad baseball team, Derek. They're a very bad baseball team. And, you know, even though the, the D back schedule the rest of the way is honestly not that difficult, it's, it's on the easier side at this point now that this week is over, but the Rockies are the one team in there that you're like, okay, now this is like a really bad baseball team. I guess the white Sox you could put in that category. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yankees. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I don't know if I'd put the Yankees in that category. And I know Sean is going to hate me for saying that, but the Yankees are he already the hates you for the hockey thing you said earlier. So it's he fun. does. And, and yeah. people are also hating on me for the, for uh, Diana Taurasi, which I, I see where you're coming from. I, I would still personally pick, pick Randy Johnson. I would too. We, we I'm can... backing you up on that. No, I'm backing you up on that. You're not alone on that one. I'm taking, I'm taking Randy here too, but uh, I'm taking the Diamondbacks over the Colorado Rockies. And like I said, it is kind of a dire moment for them i i not gonna say their season is over if they don't come out here and win a series against the rockies but there there is something to be said about stepping up in the big moment and and winning when you have to and if you're doing it against an opponent that is obviously kind of waved the white flag already for the season and isn't really putting up much of a fight then i mean i i what's what's the use of you even making the playoffs because are you even going to show up in that wild card series if that sure. you know because this is this is just as important at this point as that wild card series and if you can't step up and beat a division rival that has been fairly bad all season long and i mean again i i don't need a sweep here to be convinced but i i do need the diamondbacks to get their offense right and get things just back on track here against a a Rockies team that's really struggled. Also, don't run against Brenton Doyle. Don't do that. Ever. <laughs> He's not like our outfield. Hundred and five point seven, Derek. Did he hit it off of a bat? Did he pick the ball up and hit it off of a bat from the outfield back in, or did he just he threw that? He threw I'm a told, ball. I'm told he threw a ball at one hundred and five point seven miles an hour. Why is it he was... on the mound then? Why isn't he pitching? Can he pitch? How's his How's his slider? Yeah, that's a that's a fair question. It's a fair question. Um, oh my God, you you know there are, there are times when you know one hundred and five point seven miles per hour. It was the hardest throw by an outfielder ever tracked by Statcast. Um, Jesus Christ! Yeah, one hundred and five point seven is is pretty crazy. But yeah, I mean, this series as a whole for the Diamondbacks, this is an opportunity to to do to the Rockies what the Dodgers and to a lesser extent, the Orioles just did to the Diamondbacks, right? Like the Dodgers and Orioles, I think showed that they're just better baseball teams and the Diamondbacks, unlike their last meetup with the Rockies, I know they took two out of three from the Rockies a, a few weeks ago, but that series wasn't all that convincing, right? Those were all yeah. close, competitive, stressful games down the stretch. 
in this series, you want to kind of show like, okay, you know, maybe we're not quite up to stuff with the Dodgers and the Orioles at this point, but we're a heck of a lot better than the Colorado Rockies. And, you know, I, I don't want to say like from like a win loss standpoint, the Diamondbacks have to sweep or the season is over or anything like that, because that's just not the reality in the standings. Uh, sure. All of these teams are struggling. As we said before, the D-backs are in a four-way tie for that third wildcard spot, which is absolutely absurd. Um, you know, it, you don't necessarily have to win every single game. Uh, but on another on another level, I do think this series is important to just kind of show the world that the Diamondbacks are are better than the Rockies, like to demonstrate that although they might struggle against some of the better teams in the league, they also are going to show how much better they are than some of the lesser teams in the league. And, and this is an opportunity to do that. Well, I agree with you a thousand percent. And uh, I am a big fan of the peaks, but I don't mean the peaks in, in Colorado. I mean, the four peaks right here in Arizona, Jesse, uh, of course, that's the official craft beer of the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's what I'm drinking right now to get over this loss. Uh, and it is what I will be drinking when we have our takeover event uh, and I'll meet up at the four peach draft room located on the suite level down the first base line in deep right at chase field. Uh, you can check out the events page in our show notes to find dates and tickets for the takeover you can follow everything four peaks has going on over at their calendar at four peaks.com slash events to stay up to date on everything four peaks. Uh, and you can also follow them on social media at four peaks brew or at four peaks pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery must be 21 or older to drink four peaks and please drink responsibly. Uh, and yes, they have a wide variety of four peaks at the uh, four peaks draft room and you can try them all. Uh, and I mean that literally try them before you drink them. There's so many flavors to be had. And if there's something you haven't tried before, make sure uh, this, this last takeover event tier uh, that we have here, uh, we'll, we'll make sure to try all the beers, Jesse, maybe, maybe we get a, maybe when we get a playoff takeover, who knows, who knows, maybe that won't happen, but I'm that seems like ambitious. it would be logistically very difficult. To <laughs> I know. But... I know <laughs> we got, we got hookups. We'll see what can those, happen. Those but... tickets are in slightly higher demand than Tuesday. Just night against the Rockies, then, then but... a, yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> then, uh, you know, whatever, but that's where we'll be. We'll be there. Like you said on Tuesday. So join us for that. Um, also, if you are checking out the bet MGM app and you are a new user, you can get down on bet MGM's $1,500 first bet offer you can get it in four easy steps you download the app on ios or android or you can visit their website at betmgm.com you can sign up and deposit at least ten dollars into your betmgm sportsbook account place your first wager and receive up to fifteen hundred dollars back in bonus bets if the bet loses and if the bet does lose your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled so do this today over at betmgm join us sign up Get down on this. Of course, you can sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Again, deposit that $10 and place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager. Receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if it loses. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-522-4700, Nevada. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Kansas, Nevada, New York, or Ontario. All right. Well, that's all we got. Again, we will see you guys uh, out at the ballpark on uh, September 5th. We'll be out there for the takeover event. Well, we'll be back Tuesday. here for uh, it's, uh, uh, two days from now. That's right. Uh, in, in the meantime, we have our Mailbag Monday episode, which may or may not have already been recorded in the past. So if we say crazy things about the Baltimore Orioles series that just happened, um, forgive us. I don't know. I'm I don't know what's sure gonna happen. Sean says some crazy things about the Baltimore. I'm pretty right? sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty scared. sure he did. But Sean says crazy things on this show all the time. That's it's why true. we do this episode so we could talk about him behind his back. But yet here he is in a chat. So I don't really know what to do. I'm I'm confused today. But uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at cap underscore caveman with a K. Jesse is at Jesse and Friedman. Sean is at Sean underscore to pause. Damon is at Damon dog. We are Damon's dogs. Uh, and Damon's at Damon dog. That's D A W G. 
course, our show is at PHNX underscore D-backs, but all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys so much for your time today. We appreciate you stopping by on your Sunday. Uh, and remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it is so much more fun when Paven isn't playing first base. Thank you.